Okay, let's talk about circles. Now, uh, of course, we have a circle here, but we have a lot of other things going on uh, with and around this circle. But these are things that you're going to actually need to know if you intend to study, let's say, up to like high school level geometry. But these aren't complicated. So if you're looking at this, and you're like, OK, I don't even know what's going on. Well, it's certainly confusing uh, because we have a lot of moving parts in and around this circle. But these are things that you should know, um, basic mathematics. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is just get some terms and definitions. We're going to identify uh, as many of the little things kind of going on with this circle, just so you have some names and have some basic um, you know, terminology when we're speaking about circles. So uh, if you think you know some of these parts, and I think some of you probably you know, if I said, hey, what's the diameter of a circle? Some of you might be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Or the radius. Hopefully this is kind of coming back to you. Uh, this is kind of what we're talking about. So I'm going to get into each one of these parts uh, here in just one second. Uh, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, uh, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here literally in about a week. But I also have um, many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, um, uh, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe the CLEP exam, uh, all those exams and many, many others have math on them. And you got to do well in the math section to do well on the exam so I can help you prepare. Just go to my site and check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. Then obviously help those of you who are just, uh, you know, having a difficult time in your current math courses. Now, uh, if you're truly serious uh, and you're highly motivated about wanting to do well in math, and everyone can do well, well in mathematics, but the starting point is this. you got to take great math notes. So I've been teaching math for decades, and there's one thing I can point to with consistency, and that is that, the, uh, that those students who take great math notes almost always uh, do very, very well in mathematics, and that's not surprising. And the reverse is true. Those students who, you know, kind of like do what? Well, they're checking in, they're sneaking in little peeks at their cell phone, okay? And cell phones are awesome, but they're completely distracting, and most students um, have them in the class. So it's a temptation to be checking in on things, seeing if you got text messages, et cetera, et cetera. But as you're doing that, every time you're checking this guy, guess what? You're pulling attention away from what the teacher is saying, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of information in mathematics, I mean, just look at this circle right now. There's, you know, we're going to explain all these different parts. If you miss any little thing, well, that little thing can turn out to be a big thing. Okay, so you got to be highly, highly focused uh, when you're learning math. I mean, the key to success in anything is focus. So put away the cell phone. You know, uh, really, you know, pay attention to what the teacher's saying and write everything down. But uh, as you improve in your note taking, and most of you, I suspect, uh, probably need to. There's always room for improvement in anything. Uh, but as you are improving, you can use my notes to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, um, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. And you can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this circle and all the little parts around it. So here's what we're going to define here. We might uh, throw in a couple other little definitions. We'll see how it goes. But uh, you can see I have chord, diameter, radius, secant, tangent, center, arc, minor arc, major arc, inscribed angle, and central angle. So if you kind of want to pause the video and kind of think about it for a second, which is which, and that's kind of what we're going to be doing. We're just going to take these terms and match it to the part of the circle. So let's start with the center because that's always a good place to start from. So this would be the center right there of the circle kind of makes sense now if you're familiar with the compass okay compass i'm kind of sketching it out it's a little thing like this got like a little pencil at the end and a little tiny point so you keep this on your paper and then you spin this thing around you create a circle with this point here 
is the center. Okay, now I'm not even getting into how we label these things. We just kind of want to identify it. So that's the center of the circle. All right, now I think the uh, next thing uh, that we can identify or should identify is the diameter. So the diameter would be this little white line right here. Okay, this is the the one thing that best identifies uh, the diameter. And the diameter is basically like the width of the circle, and it always goes through the center. So now that we have the center, we can see the diameter is going through the center, and it's effectively the width, how wide the circle is. It's a line that goes through. It touches both sides of the circle and goes to the center. That's our diameter. All right, so now that we got the diameter down, let's talk about the radius, okay? Now, diameter and radius, these are pretty common terms with circles. Uh, most people probably kind of know these, but let's talk about this. So the radius starts from the center and goes out to the edge, okay? So half of the diameter is the radius or twice the, the radius is the diameter, okay? So this right here would be the radius. Okay, so now let's start talking about some of these more interesting little things. Uh, let's get into chord, right? So what is a chord? Well, this little blue line right there is a chord, okay? It's a line segment uh, that touches basically its endpoints are on the circle, okay? So it doesn't exceed the circle. It just fits right in there nicely. And, of course, we could have all different type of chords. If you notice, the diameter is, uh, in fact, a chord, okay? It's the largest chord in a circle, okay? And you can have all kinds of diameters, okay? Just you draw the largest possible chord as long as it's going to the center, okay? We just call that special chord the diameter. But that's all a chord is. Now, let's talk about this uh, secant, okay? Now, the secant or a secant is a line, okay? So this is a secant right here. It's a line that chops through the circle that includes a chord, okay? So that's what a secant is. And, uh, you know, we don't have to make it any more difficult than that. You know, it's not more, you know, complicated. We just have a lot of terminology here. Let's get on with the tangent, okay? So this little white line right here is called a tangent line. It's a very interesting concept about uh, uh, the tangent line because there's something called the point of tangency. Now, a tangent line is a special line that barely, barely just touches the circle, or in fact, doesn't even have to be a circle. It could be anything, but, um, you know, any kind of function, any kind of curve. So it touches it at exactly one point. Okay, so let's say maybe like this point right here. That point there is called the point of tangency. Okay, now what's interesting about that is that from that point of tangency to the center is a perpendicular angle, okay? Now, of course, you could have all kinds of tangent lines in and around the circle. Um, not in the circle, but touching the circle at any one point. So you can have lines here, 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 etc. But, of course, a tangent is not a secant. Remember, a secant is not, it's chopping through the circle. So a tangent line is just touching in that one point, the point of tangency. All right, let's talk about arc. All right, now an arc is a, uh, basically is a piece of this outer part of the circle or the actual circle itself. So here to here, which I kind of have highlighted in yellow, would be an arc. And so we can measure this arc. I'm not Again, I'm not going to get into the notation here. That it would just make this too busy. I just want you to get familiar with the terminology. But this right here could basically maybe be like, let's say, 70 degrees from here to here. So that's what an arc is. Okay, It's just a segment of the entire circle. Now, being that we're talking about the entire circle all the way around, one term I do not have on here that some of you may uh, be familiar with and should be familiar with is the circumference. Okay, So the circumference is the distance around the circle. Okay, So it's kind of like the perimeter of the circle, but that's a good one to have. So that is the circumference. Okay, now let's talk about minor arc. So now that we know what an arc is, what's a minor arc? Uh, it's pretty easy stuff. A minor arc is less than a semicircle. It's less than 180 degrees. So this guy right here would be a minor arc. And maybe this distance from here all the way around, this huge arc, okay, anything greater than 180 degrees would be uh, referred to as a major arc. Okay, now... Let's talk about uh, central angle, and I know my uh, little picture here is getting pretty busy, so let me see if I can clean this up a little bit, 
And, uh, okay, bear with me because I want you to really be learning this stuff. Okay, again, this is just uh, basic terminology. So what's the central angle? Well, it starts from the center. Okay, so this angle right here uh, we would refer to as a central angle, and it goes out to this particular arc. So if this arc is, let's say, 60 degrees, the central angle here is 60 degrees. Okay. Now there is another type of angle, and that's called an inscribed angle. And this little angle right here, you can see it, this white line, and uh, this diameter right there. It doesn't have to be the diameter. It could, be, it could go like this as well. But this uh, angle right here is an inscribed angle. So it's not starting from the center. Its vertice is on the actual edge of a circle, and it's forming an arc. Now what's interesting about this is that an inscribed angle is half... Um, its arc that's being formed. So if this is 60 degrees from here to here, this ins uh, inscribed angle would be 30 degrees. So, um, you know, when you're learning geometry, you learn all kinds of, uh, you know, theorems and postulates and axioms and it's all kinds of different stuff, but, and they all refer to things in, in their particular nomenclature, okay? So first things first, let's just get these basic parts down. And as you can see, it's not very difficult. Okay, at least I hope it's not that difficult. Hopefully, I did a pretty good job of explaining these. Now, if you already knew all of this, well, then I must give you a nice circle. But let's put a little happy face in it and the good old 1985 uh, mohawk there. <laughs> I'll give you an A plus too. Okay, very, very good. All right, but circles are extremely important in mathematics. I mean, think about how important circles are. I mean, how would you like to be driving a car with like tires that are circles? I mean, it's like one of the greatest inventions of mankind is to figure out circles. They have unique, powerful properties. As a matter of fact, circles are so connected to other areas of mathematics like trigonometry and calculus. It's just, you know, you know, circles are, are hugely important. But first things first, first thing we need to do is just get some basic terminology, some basic parts beyond what you uh, already know. So that was diameter and radius. Maybe you didn't know anything about a circle. Now, you know, you know like a ton about circles, okay? But um, again, we can't study circles unless we can identify with, uh, the particular parts of a circle. And that was the goal of this video. Now, if uh, I did my job and you're like, okay, hey, I learned something. If that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, uh, basic to advanced mathematics, all there for you. So if you like my teaching style, I would love uh, nothing more for you to watch my videos. My goal is always to try to teach math in a clear and, and, and uh, understandable way. Nobody should be uh, failing in math. Okay, if you're doing your part now, okay, taking great notes, listening to, uh, listening to your math teacher, talking to your math teacher, hey, how can I improve? Those are the starting points, but, but above and beyond that, if you need additional help and you like my teaching style, for example, there's tons of free resources out there. Of course, my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.